Gondaga Prep held its first in-person graduation today since the start of the pandemic. Tonight, we hear from the valedictorian about the challenges the past year has presented. We saw cloudy skies today and temperatures that didn't even make it out of the 50s across most of the inland northwest. I'm tracking continued cooler than average temperatures for the start of our work week. And after over a year apart, families separated by the U.S.-Canada border are calling for both countries to ease COVID crossing restrictions. Well, welcome to Creme 2 News at 10. Good evening. It's great to have you with us. I'm Dana Marie McNichol. We have an update on the fire burning along I-90 near Vantage. The Grant County Sheriff's Office says the fire is contained and crews will be working overnight to clear up the scene. The fire first broke out this afternoon along the highway causing lane closures. Crews worked with helicopter assistance to contain the flames. The cause of the fire remains unknown. And you might have felt drops in the temperature today. I know I definitely did. Tonight, we're going to kick things off with a look at our weather. Hi, Michelle. Oh, it is definitely much colder than it was last week and uh, downright chilly in some spots. As we take a look at current conditions across the inland northwest, uh, places like Deer Park have already dropped down into the upper 30s right now. The skies have temporarily cleared out 49 degrees in Spokane, 49 in Coeur d'Alene, a little bit warmer out in Moses Lake right now, 59 degrees, but it's already down into the low to mid 40s from Moscow to Pullman. Here's a look at the forecast temperatures overnight as we get into early tomorrow morning. Again, temperatures are going to be on the chilly side, similar to what they were this morning. I think we may warm up a little bit better tomorrow afternoon as we should get a little bit of sunshine. Uh, but of course, this afternoon we did not even get out of the 50 satellite and radar right now shows things are pretty quiet out there. We had a few sprinkles earlier this evening, only got a trace of rainfall in the Spokane and Coeur d'Alene area. So here's what we're looking at over the next three days. Partly cloudy skies on Monday, a chilly start, but we should be able to warm up at the lower 60s tomorrow. We'll be up in the 70s with mostly cloudy skies on Tuesday and then have a slight chance of some rainfall. It doesn't look like much is going to fall, but a slight chance on Wednesday with high temperatures near 70. Well, Gonzaga Prep held its first in-person graduation since the start of the pandemic today. This ceremony was held at school's football field and family and friends filled the stands to watch their students receive their diploma on the stage after what's been a very difficult year. In fact, the seniors just returned to the classroom full time for their last quarter of instruction. The class's valedictorian has a very impressive resume. Andrew Nordenhagen wasn't the valic, only just a valedictorian. He also had a perfect ACT score, an almost perfect SAT score, and he even designed this year's Bloomsday Finisher T-shirt. He addressed his fellow graduates at the ceremony today. When I started writing this speech, one thing that kept coming back to me was the way we handled our senior year being flipped upside down. We only had a fraction of the school year in person. We crammed all of our sports seasons into a couple of months. And on top of all that, we weren't able to sit in the mezzanine for lunch. He also spoke about the challenges of the past year and how his classmates had to navigate virtual classes while also trying to prepare for their next steps in life. We'll have more about Norton Hagen during our 11 o'clock show. Now several Spokane High School students will hold their graduation ceremonies at the U.S. Pavilion in Riverfront Park. On Saturday, June 12, Shadle Park, North Central, and On Track Academy will hold commencement throughout the day. The following day, Sunday, June 13th, Lewis and Clark, Rogers, and Ferris High School seniors will graduate. On Monday, the 14th, the community school will hold their graduation. Each graduate will receive two general seating wristbands for guests to attend the ceremony. Graduates, family members who are fully vaccinated may exchange their two general seating area wristbands for up to four wristbands for those who are fully vaccinated. You can text the word grad to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you more information on this. Well, there have been reports that the U.S. will open the border with Canada on June 22nd, but there's no official confirmation just yet. However, some families in our state say enough is enough. Our Amy Moreno from our sister station in Seattle tells us about a unique gathering to connect those cut off by the border shutdown. These days, it seems everyone's focused on heading in different directions. Did you bring your son, Lucas? But along the U.S.-Canada border, <laughs> there's an area among farm fields where the roads converge and run side by side. <laughs> Separated by the border and this simple cable fence, they come together. This little one has sunglasses on. This isn't about a meeting of the minds. It's about a meeting of hearts. Kind of makes me angry, really, and, and sad. It's just, it's just not right. It's a sort of 
protests, but when you're separated from loved ones and this is your chance to see them, it's hard to be angry. <laughs> that dog wants to go over so badly. So we're here to raise our awareness to the governments, both sides, that we want the borders open and that families are essential. There's talk that the U.S. may open its border on June 22nd, but that could put Canadians in a tough spot if they face quarantine or difficulties trying to return to Canada. This group hopes both countries will open. Sarah frequently meets loved ones at these spots so they can see her young daughters. Pretty weird, <laughs> especially with the niece. This is our uh, first niece and first grandkids for my parents. So this is where we've seen her grow up, I guess. Grandpa's 80th on the 22nd, so that'd be the best present ever. Linda Wiley says the long separation is really taking a toll. Well, people, sick of the border being closed so long. This is the third Saturday. They've hosted one of these gatherings and say they'll continue to do them until the two sides are reunited again. Along the U.S.-Canada border, Amy Moreno, Crim 2 News. All right, thank you so much, Amy. Coming up after the break, the governor of California is slamming a federal judge ruling that overturns the state's three-decade-old ban on assault weapons. We'll have more on that ruling coming up after the break.